not to press record, but I just started it. So now we'll be able to watch it on YouTube later. All right, so Eva, I think you shared a picture with me. Or wait, I didn't get your penguin picture, Eva. So can you just like share your own screen and show us? You know how to go to the bottom and it says share screen. If you want, it'll make you bigger. Nah, you can pin your video. So like at the top, there are three dots, white dots and blue, and it will say pin video. And then you can share your screen and it will pin the video. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Rosie, you're seriously a technology expert. I love it. Okay, well, we can all see you're nice and big now. Not to me. She isn't to me. Really? She is on my. Hmm. Oh, do I have to just share my? Oh, see, I didn't follow Rosie's directions. So there's no way. Um, why isn't it nice and big? Rosie, I'm trying. Um, well, she has to do it on herself. Oh, she has to do it on herself? Okay, that's why then. Hmm. It's a conundrum of esoterica. <laughs> An esoteric conundrum, huh? Well, did you still want to just read us your facts? Yeah. Oh, oh see, so this is like how Rosie is screen sharing. Rosie screen sharing? Yeah. Okay. The penguin. Facts. People that show penguins and polar bears are wrong. Penguins live in the South Pole. Polar bears live in the North Pole. The scientific name for penguin is Sveniscus. I think is how you pronounce it. I have no idea. Actually. Here. Sorry, somebody left. I thought it was you. Go ahead, Evelyn. Okay. Here we go again. One. Sorry. Facts. One. People that show penguins and polar bears are wrong. Two. Penguins live in the South Pole. Polar bears live in the North Pole. The scientific name for penguin is Sveniscus. I think is how you pronounce it. <laughs> That's awesome. And so, you know, I agree with you that hurting animals is wrong, but technically it's an opinion, only because people can disagree about it. People that um, show penguins and Yeah, technically it's not a fact. But we do agree. I don't think yeah, that's I wasn't talking about killing animals. I was talking about people that show penguins and polar bears together are wrong. Oh, I know. But, Evelyn, what um, facts should we write about penguins? Um... Maybe where they live? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Ashley, where do penguins live? Remember, it was one of the poles. Dad, can you give me another um, North Pole? Close. That's polar bears. South Pole. South Pole. Penguins live in the South Pole. Awesome. Looks like our last presenter will be Alice about her dog. So Alan, uh, are you going to be able to hold it up to your screen and then maybe read for us? Wait, skip Rosie. I'll, sorry Rosie, you can be the best. She's muted. I know, I'm trying to unmute her. Beautiful poster. Can you unmute yourself, Alice? Because I keep clicking on your name and nothing's happening. Yeah, she's getting unmuted. Miss Brown, you just you just clicked it again. Really? Yeah, click it again. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, now yeah. I can yes. hear you. Um, I'm going to skip the uh, uh, free sentences and just wanna, I'm going to read that. Dogs are good at smelling. Good pets for kids. A dog can smell about a thousand times better than a human. 
Wow. Um, so Alice, what fun facts should we write about dogs, do you think? They can smell a thousand times better than a human. Awesome. Dogs can smell 1,000, and I'm using the small x to mean times, just like multiply. thousand times better than my computer's telling me something's wrong about the South Pole. It's because I needed to capitalize the S and the P. Right. Why did it say humans is wrong? Hmm. Let's find out. Okay. I guess it, it fixed itself. I'm not sure quite why it was doing that. <laughs> All righty. And before we take a nice dance break, we all need one, um, I wanted us to write down just a few words about our field trip to Africa. So one word that you guys can write is wildlife. We didn't have a field trip to Africa. Oh, we are. We're having one right now. <laughs> really? really, really. So let's write down the word wildlife. And that's a compound word. We took the word wild and the word life. Then, next to wildlife, you can write conservancy, which is a really fancy word. Another word that looks just like this means the same thing as conservation. But you don't have to write that one down. Um, yes, who has a question? Okay, Linda. You forgot about Rosie. Oh my gosh, why do I keep forgetting about Rosie? Thank you. Good grief. I am just the worst. Okay, I'm going to stop the share. And Rosie, you can share your screen and take it away. Whoops. Good thing Linda told us. I don't always check the chat box in time. something happening? Well, I think Rosie's just getting everything in order. Uh, I can't seem to, it's not, it's saying I can't, um, uh, it says I can't, um, oh, that. I just changed a setting. Want to try it one more time? Sure. Okay. Okay, working together, we can okay. figure it out. Here. Doesn't seem to want to do that. Maybe. Did you try the pin, pin your yeah. screen thing? Yeah, I did. Hmm. Oh well, I can just show you it um, from here. So this is, ooh, I'm going to have to stand back. That's amazing. That should go okay. on the so good. Okay, so um, this is, I did the sable antelope. Um, and down here at the bottom is what it looks like. Um, and then I had a few facts about it. Um, they start out as a reddish brown color. As they grow, their color changes and they get white spot, spot. They mostly live in southern parts of Africa in the biomes of grasslands, savanna, and woodland. Savanna woodland. They live in Africa they live in herds of about ten to thirty, consisting of mostly females and they're young, and one dominant male. Um, they weigh about 500 pounds. Uh, the, their height is just over uh, 
seven to eight feet with their horns. Um, their horns are, can grow up to four feet. Um, the um, young sable antelopes are prey to leopards, hyenas, crocodile, and crocodiles, and grown-ups are prey to lions. What they eat, herbs, minimum length grass, and lots of leaves. Um, the tree, the tree leaves can take up, to take up 90% of their diet. Um, their lifespan is about 16 to 19 years and their speed is about 40 miles per hour. So yeah. I took a lot of notes, Rosie, because you had so many cool facts to share. Anyone else mind to hold up their notes to the screen? Because there was a lot. So many cool facts about antelopes since I didn't know. She kind of put mine to shame. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie did work very hard, I agree. But I know you've worked hard on other projects, Dash. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Do you want to share one fun fact about antelopes? Me? Ooh, I... Oh, go ahead, Dash. Okay, well, mine was that they live 16 to 19 years. So yeah. I think that's interesting because you're only considered like um, 16, when you're 16 to 19, you're only considered like a young adult human wise. Right? Yeah. Did I spell it right, Rosie? Is it sable antelopes? Yeah. Okay. How do you write down your fun fact about stable antelope? And we just have a few titles and subtitles to write about. So, uh, sorry, Hadley. Um, we're only going to do like a little part of the field trip and then we'll do some more next week before or after our country presentations, so you'll see it. And yes, do you have a comment? Oh, I'm just saying bye. <laughs> have a great day. You too. Thank you. Hello, what? <laughs> All right, so Dash, can you read these two words for us, these big fancy words? Maybe Dash will laugh. Wildlife Conservancy. Yes, wildlife conservancy. We've got this part of the word con, which means with. Oops, good grief. Sorry, guys. Can we still see the screen? Yes, no? See the screen? Okay, yes, we can. So we've got con, which means with. And then the root of this word Damn. is Blaster. Don't cheddar. Don't like cheddar. to save. Somebody likes cheddar cheese? <laughs> so conserve. And the last part of the word is the suffix. And it kind of just makes this word a noun. Conservancy. So we'll learn about how to save wildlife in this video how to save their habitats. And in Africa, very, um, a very big part of Africa is covered by two habitats, one that starts with G and one that starts with D. I Are can you, name them. One of the habitats in Africa that starts um, with D? Grassland. That's all I have that in Ashley. <laughs> but yes, grassland. And, and you know the one that starts with a D for a habitat? Or really, I should, it's like a biome also, but it's an animal habitat as well. Um, or let's see, who else could answer? Alice, do you know? Or Andrea knows. Oops, that on you, Andrea. What did you say, Andrea? Oh, why is it not working? No. I'm sorry. I'm sure you said it correctly. It is desert. I got to spell it with only one S. It becomes dessert. 
for strawberry shortcake, SS. Yes. We will learn about something called eco tourism. Hmm, that's a big fancy word we can write down. And we learn about something called reclamation, which again, it might sound like a really difficult word, but when we see it explained in our video, it won't seem so crazy. So let's write down the word reclamation. And when you have all these words written down, here to the screen. All right, so Jackson, did you write down these big crazy words? <laughs> Great job, thank you. Rosie, awesome. Valerie and Alice, good job. These are some things we'll learn about. Some today, awesome. Ashley, maybe some next week. And next week is when you should have your presentation or project ready all about an African country that you pick. Okay. So I'll take a little screenshot. And then I'll stop my share. Um, in this video, we might hear about the person who's presenting share something that they believe personally, but it doesn't mean that it's the right belief or that everyone needs to believe it, but everyone has different ideas about some things and that's okay. So if you hear him talk about the creation, it's just his idea. But one last question before our dance party and before we start the field trip is, what is tourism? We don't know what ecotourism is if we don't know what tourism is. What do you think, Rosie? We've done tourism, remember? Um, um, I believe tourism is when, you know, people that tour areas are, that's what they do, tourism. Okay, so if we were doing tourism at Miss Brown's house, it would be that if you wanted to see my house, you would come over and you would have to pay me money. And once you gave me your money, I would let you see my house and be really interesting because you might always wonder, what does it look like how Miss Brown lives every day? And that would be touring Miss Brown's house or tourism. Um, so if Miss Brown was running tourism out of her own house, how could that be good for me? Would I get something from that? Tourism? Rosie? You would get the profit, so the money. I'll get the money. And what would you guys get out of touring my house? See how people... But you would, um, we would get to see how you live and what you do. Yeah, it would be interesting for you, maybe. So that's what tourism is. We'll find out in our field trip what ecotourism might be. Now, Dash, do you have a question when you typed in the chat box? Wait, what? No, um, the, this Zoom support staff person. Yeah, that's interesting. They spelled support wrong. I know. Let's do a bit of a dance party to get our wiggles out and get energized before we go to Africa. So, um, Jackson, pick the first number. What? Number one. What? All right, it is the famous ape dance, and that's kind of good because apes definitely live in Africa. Wiggle, 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 where? I will have Andrew pick the next <laughs> number. Okay, which one did you choose? Off? You picked okay. one. Uh, you picked one. Oh, what? Yeah, I want ten. You want ten? Okay. You get a star. Nice job. You can draw that on your paper, and you get the owl. Oh. So cool. we're getting the looseness into our neck. The <laughs> 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 alley. <laughs> Oh, we'll do that later, man. You Never know how to unmute yourself, Alice, but I will try to help you out. Okay, hopefully, um, Number five. Number five. Let me try that one out. 
Okay, polar bears, which Evelyn talked about in the presentation. Yes, polar bear dance. I know frogs. And Andrea? Let's take number three. Somebody else is take two. I'm not sure I can hear Andrea. Um, yes. Um, number uh, six. Number six. You got the chicken dance. You can't really see my feet, but I promise I'm dancing. All right, guys. Well, put on your imagination caps because we're going to Africa. <laughs> Two little pictures of the yes. continent of Africa. Here is what we call a physical map of Africa, where you get to see what it looks like in real life. Where the big desert is, the Sahara, and even the Kalahari Desert, all the rivers, and the green is where there would be trees and grasslands. This next map is called a political map, and it shows us all the names of the countries. Today we will get to see a little bit about Kenya, which is the light blue one, and Burkina Faso. So, we're getting on plane, and we are going to Africa. Let's do it! So if you can see the screen. Awesome. Let's learn about how to keep the wildlife in Africa safe. The Nature Conservancy, live in classrooms around the world to teach how nature works to provide our clean air, water, food, and energy. Learn what you can do to help keep nature healthy and productive. Hello everyone and welcome to the Nature Conservancy's virtual field trip to the deserts and grasslands of Africa. My name is Tyler DeWitt and I'll be your host. We're so happy to have all of you with us. In the next 40 minutes, we'll be traveling via YouTube and Google Hangout, first to Kenya and then to Burkina Faso to learn about the land, the people, and the animals who live there. Thanks to the Nature Conservancy in partnership with PBS Learning Media, for making this presentation possible. The Nature Conservancy works all over the world to protect land and wildlife. That's what conservancy means, an organization that works to preserve wildlife and wildlife habitats. The Nature Conservancy works on projects all throughout the world. In Australia, they work to preserve more than 20 million acres. In Montana, the Nature Conservancy work to help the pronghorn antelope. These animals graze in different places in the summer and winter, but the two areas were separated by man-made barriers like fences and highways. So the Nature Conservancy worked to build a forest bridge so that animals could easily move back and forth between their two habitats. And in China, the Nature Conservancy is working to protect the natural home of pandas and golden monkeys. Now it's time to meet our special guests. First, I'd like to introduce Nature Conservancy field scientist, Charles Olachina, who lives and works in Kenya. Welcome, Charles. So glad to have you with us. Hey, thank you there. And um, I'm really delighted to join you in this uh, event. It's really hot here in Nairobi. I don't know how it is out there in the US, but uh, we take it that uh, it's a sign of how the world works. We're just doing about 74 degrees Fahrenheit here. So it's been pretty hot, but all is well. Ooh, sounds a lot hotter than it's been in many areas of the United States. So let's head back to the States and welcome the sixth graders from Bryan Middle School in Elmhurst, Illinois, right outside of Chicago. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us. And I bet it's a little bit colder in Illinois than it is in Nairobi. What do you guys say? Hi, I'm Olivia. Um, it's about two, de two degrees here and we have one and a half feet of snow on the ground. So hey, Brian Middle School students, let's hear how much you know about Africa. How many people live on the continent of Africa? <laughs> now, whoever said one billion, you were closest. An astonishing 1.1 billion people live in Africa. 
That's almost three times as many people as live in the United States. So now let's take a look at a map of Africa to see where we'll be visiting. There are 54 different countries on the continent. Today we'll be visiting two, Burkina Faso in West Africa and Kenya in East Africa. So Charles, where should we go first? Thanks, Tyler. I think we want to start with East Africa and Kenya. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the spectacular grasslands of Africa. Uh, what are grasslands? Why they matter? And why they are so spectacular to the work we do around the world. But these are significant uh, assets that hold wildlife population, that hold cattle economy and communities that have thrived on these grasslands over millions of years. I'm sure some of you have heard about the Samburu and the Maasai, the proud nomadic people who live in and inhabit these grasslands for millions of years. And they have lived with cattle and with wildlife. And this has been a way of life. In these grasslands, the critical factor that drives productivity is plenty of rain, good soil, a bit of dry season that really keeps a cycle of production that feeds the cattle, that feeds the people, that provides milk, provides the essentials of life for both nature and the people that live therein. So the grasslands are home to an amazing interlocking community of plants and animals that live there. Some of the world's largest mammals live in the grasslands. So let's take a look at this clip of the animals that call this area their home. Charles, I bet you've seen all these animals in the wild. Can you tell us about some of the most exciting adventures you've had? Yeah, I must admit that I was born in one of the most beautiful parts of the world, and I've been lucky to really experience it in full splendor. Uh, the grasslands of Africa, as I mentioned before, support a wide array of animals found nowhere in the world. Beautiful, majestic elephants. Uh, you have these kingly lions, and you have very humble tortoises, you know, out there in the plains. Uh, so in, in growing up, we've interacted with this wildlife as part of uh, the ecosystem. And one of the most naughty thing I tried up when I was growing up was a saying we used to have. We never knew what it meant that you can actually milk an elephant. And it was really fun as kids trying to go out there and experiment with things that nobody had done, not knowing that nobody can ever dare milk an elephant because, hey, mother elephant is going to really kick you. So mm -hmm. we, we, we tried to, to waylay an elephant on its way to drinking and see, can we really pull it off? My God, that was a near <laughs> death experience. However, <laughs> I mean, mother elephant was sympathetic to us in our own innocent youth, knowing that these are just kids trying to figure out how life works around. So, I mean, working with nature and living with nature has really imbued me with a lot of experiences that these animals actually are a beautiful creature. They seem to understand man more than man understands them. So it taught me a lot in my growing up and coming to appreciate nature. So we survived that. And to this date, I have a lot of respect to this wildlife that is in these beautiful grasslands. So you tried to milk an elephant. What, what actually happened? We couldn't even get a foot close to it because, you know, we never knew that the elephant, you know, could be having its breast in front, not in the hind legs like cows. So, you know, we were young kids. And so out of curiosity, trying to go the hind legs, find, hey, how can we do it? And the <laughs> elephant, you know, started trumpeting and kicking around and just telling us, hey, young kids, keep off. Uh, oh, this is not for you. Wow. This is for baby elephants. Wow. All right. Let me just real quick unmute you guys. Oh, so, Alice, what's Hello. one animal that you could get milk from? Any A cow. A cow. What's another animal on the farm that's not a cow that you can get milk from? Anybody? Pig. 
Flesh. Yeah, you could get it from a pig. I was thinking about a goat because you can buy goat milk in the stores. Goat. Goat. And yes, Valerie is right, elephants. But it's funny because oh, you to milk a cow, you try to go to the back of the cow, but with the elephant, they're in the front. So if you were trying to get it, it would kick you. And that's what happened to um, the man who's telling us all about Africa when he was a kid. He was trying to get milk from the elephant just to see if he could, and it was trying to kick him. And that is very dangerous. Thank you. <laughs> What yeah. an amazing experience, Charles. That sounds so cool. You know, I, I, I know it's a dream of mine to go and visit Africa and to be able to see these animals in person. And, and I know that I'm not the only one who feels that way. Um, a lot of people uh, visit Kenya and many other countries specifically because they want to experience nature, right? They want to see animals in the wild, hike through beautiful rainforests, maybe swim through cor coral reefs. And uh, this type of travel is called ecotourism. Eco comes from the word ecology, which means nature or environment, and tourism just means traveling somewhere. So the term ecotourism means traveling somewhere to see nature. Now, I, I know a lot of people from all over the world come to Kenya to experience a safari. So let's watch this clip while Charles tells us a little bit more about how ecotourism is affecting Kenya. Excellent. Actually, that t takes me to the reality of what milking the elephant is all about. Ecotourism is milking the elephant. The elephant is actually money on hooves. It's only money on the feet for the communities. There are no buildings. There are no massive highways. There are no railways there. It is pristine valleys, grasslands. So people come from wild... ...nature so that... We are coexisting with elephants in the same way as we are living with our livestock. And that produces a system that attracts people. So every year, for instance, in the Kenya uh, coasts, we have so many people uh, coming to snorkel and enjoy the coral reefs and spend time with dolphins and the water. Up in the savannas, we have people coming to watch the biggest migration in the world, the wildebeest migration. It's been happening for thousands of years. It's synchronized. Thousands of wildebeests coming from thousands of kilometers away, crossing over the majestic Mara River, grazing over the pasture, and going back in a very kind of uh, sequential fashion. And this is just awesome. Now, what happens is that these people are paying real dollars uh, to come and see these spectacles. People are paying real dollars to come and adopt wildlife. People are paying real dollars to come and experience the culture that these people have helped secure and sustain this wildlife. So that goes into the local economy. In what way? People are paid salaries in hotels, people get dividends because they are running conservancies, uh, park, park managers hire local communities, and they get income that buys books, pays school fees, is building hospitals. So wildlife is just our way of life. So it's something that we value, an asset that we want to sustain going into the future. That's amazing to hear because, you know, I know that it can be expensive to set aside land in a country for animals to live. I know that it can be hard to preserve natural spaces, but what you're saying is that a country can end up making a tremendous amount of money by keeping these natural spaces safe because other people want to, will, will want to come visit them and they'll spend a lot of money to uh, have that experience of ecotourism. Absolutely. <laughs> Guys, why are you drawing mustaches? <laughs> so this is going to be the end of our Zoom. But I was just wondering if anyone could tell me what exactly we learned about ecotourism and how that actually helps animals. In Africa. Can we do a little scavenger hunt? Sure, but can you tell me what ecotourism is all about? That's right. Go means nature. Tourism is where people pay money to come see stuff. So, Andrew, what are people paying money to go see? They're paying money to see animals. Yeah, and Andrea, if people are paying money to see the animals, how does that help animals? It helps them get used to them. That is true, Andrew. 
How does it help us keep animals safe? It helps us keep animals. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna ask Dashiell. Well, um, it it really doesn't help the animals that much. I guess I was just thinking about the money, <laughs> and maybe it could be used for something. I guess I guess the money could be used to be given to the animals and that use. Yeah, what were I you thinking, Rose? Oh, sorry. Hmm. But it also could harm them because, you, you know, they don't all, I bet they don't all always want to be watched and stuff. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because anytime we're dealing with animals, there's always some good things and bad things. Just like when we celebrate Earth Day, we get to learn about the good things that humans are doing to help the Earth, but also there's bad things too. We always have to think about both the good and the bad. And um, I when I always go back, back when I always get back from home, I always see like trash on the floor when I go to, like to my house. Trash on the ground, you said? Yes. Yeah, and that's definitely not conserving environment and the nature outside. So we got to pick up that trash. Alice, did you have a comment before we do a quick scavenger hunt? Uh, no.